peace be to you. Was the Queen of Sheba the great-grandmother of Muhammad? According to the book of 2 Chronicles 9 verse 1 to 2, and when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem, with a very great company, and camels that bear spices, and gold in abundance, and precious stones, and when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions, and there was nothing hid from Solomon, which he told her not. Unquote the Queen of Sheba visited King Solomon upon his invitation, by sending out a hoopah bird with King's letter bound to one of its wings according to the Hebrew colloquy of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, translated and annotated by David ben Abraham. During the conversation in the king's bedchamber, the Queen of Sheba answered, Nay, my lord the king. It was not merely tidings from thee which did trouble me, for none there is who durst look with contempt upon thy calling. But rather, we have heard it stated by our ancestors of old, even by Abraham who was married to Kirah, who bare him six sons, from whom came Sheba our ancestor, that Abraham's offspring would bring forth a ruler, even the Messiah, who would exercise dominion in the world. For this is what was meant by the words, for as to the sons of the concubines belonging to Abraham, unto them Abraham gave gifts, and sent them away, eastward to the east country unquote Genesis 25 verse 6. Those gifts meaning none other than the mystery of the earth's redemption, delivered unto us by our ancestor Abraham. I have fame come, therefore, out of due respect to his great name, to wit, God's name, to know whether or not thou art this Messiah. Unquote the Queen of Sheba came from southwestern Arabia known as Yemen today, where her ancient city ruin at Merib is still found today. Furthermore all kings of Arabia but not from Ethiopia brought gifts of gold and silver to visit King Solomon. 2 Chronicles 9 verse 14 says, Beside that which chapmen and merchants brought. And all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. Unquote There were three persons called Sheba in the Old Testament Bible. The first Sheba and his brother Dedan were children of Ramah son of Cush, son of Ham based on Genesis 10 verse 7. The second Sheba was a son of Yoktan based on Genesis 10 verse 26 to 29 from the forefather of Heber. The third Sheba and his brother Nadan, children of Yokshan was a son of Kidder a concubine of Abraham based on Genesis 25 verse 1 to 3. These two children of Yokshan reportedly emigrated to the wildernesses, according to the Hebrew book of Jasher. There is no smoke without fire. The queen of Sheba came from the bloodline of Kidder concubine of Abraham based on the Jewish tradition. The kingdom of Saba began from 1200, before Christ until 275 AD, which fits the timeline of the Queen of Sheba. Unfortunately Muslims are unaware of the origin of Muhammad from the Quraysh tribe, which originated from the Sabines. According to Dr. Rafat Amari author of the book Islam in the Light of History, after over 30 years of in-depth studies on Islam and pre-Islamic history, he concluded that Muhammad came from Quraysh tribe originating in Yemen. Quran Saba 3444, Al-Qasas 2846 and Hud 1149 collectively confirm that the forefathers of Muhammad were neither given the scripture nor send the warner to them before Muhammad. This proves that Muhammad came from the Sabian root of Yoktan in Yemen, who emigrated to central western Arabia, of which Quran Saba 3444 speaks well about the origin of the Sabines. 1 Kings 10 verse 1 And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of Yahweh, she came to prove him with hard questions. The Queen of Sheba came from a wealthy nation of the Sabines in Yemen, where a spice of frankincense was planted in abundant. 1 Kings 10 verse 10 And she gave the king in hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices very great store, and precious stones, there came no more such abundance of spices, as these which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Whether or not King Solomon slept with the Queen of Sheba is unclear, but the term all her desire may be affirmative, as some scholars think so. 1 Kings 10, 13 And King Solomon gave unto the Queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Did Muhammad come from the bloodline of the Queen of Sheba?
Even if King Solomon the Hebrew slept with the Queen of Sheba, there is no written record to prove that the Queen produced the Arabized Arab tribe of the Quraysh. Muslims cannot evade the fact that Muhammad was a Sabian but not from the bloodline of Queen of Sheba, whom King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all her desire. The culture of Sabians allow women to take the initiative to propose marriage. The Queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's many wives and concubines and she might send many gifts to him, to win his heart for one or two nights. But the entourage was an official visit from Yemen, Arabia to Israel whereby the Queen of Sheba tested King Solomon with hard questions, and to find out, if he was the promised Messiah through the bloodline of Isaac son of Abraham. The colloquy of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon concludes with this statement, so, she went away into her own land, leaving behind her a great reputation for one who sought after virtue. 1 Kings 11 verse 1 to 2. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Adamite, Sidonian, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which Yahweh had said to the people of Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. 1 Kings 11 verse 3. He had 700 wives, who were princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. 1 Kings 11 verse 4. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to Yahweh his God, as was the heart of David his father. However Quran Saba 3444 speaks well about the origin of the Sabians, who were neither given any scripture nor warner was sent to them before Muhammad. If the Sabians were not the forefathers of Muhammad, why Allah wished to compare Muhammad with them as before you? Why would Hebrew Jesus speak of a Sabian, who was scriptureless and lived in idolatry in Yemen, since 1898, before Christ before emigrating to Mecca in Saudi Arabia? When the forefathers of Muhammad were not given the scripture before him, Karaba cannot be built according to the scripture of Yahweh God. Furthermore, it is not the Hebrews, who changed the direction of prayers but Allah of Muhammad himself. Quran 2 145 says, And even if thou brought unto, those who have received the scripture all kinds of portents, they would not follow thy Qiblah, nor can thou be a follower of their Qiblah, nor are some of them followers of the Qiblah of others. And if thou should follow their desires after the knowledge, which has come unto thee, then surely are thou of the evil doers. Unquote now, the prohibition of Allah to use the Qibla of the Hebrews came from Allah of Muhammad. The literal translation of Quran 2145 reads, And if you gave, those who were given the book with each evidence, they would not have followed your prayer direction, and you are not with following their prayer direction, and some of them are not with following the prayer direction of some, and if you followed their self-attractions for desires from, after what came to you from the knowledge, that you are then from the oppressors. Unquote by virtue of Quran 2 145, Muhammad could not revert to the Qibla of the Hebrews in Jerusalem, because Allah has told him not to do so by these words, if you follow their desires after the knowledge has come to you, then you are of the evil doers. Based on Quran 2 149 says, And whensoever thou come forth for prayer, O Muhammad turn thy face toward the inviolable place of worship. Lo! It is the truth from thy Lord. Allah is not unaware of what ye do. Unquote it does not make sense for Muhammad in the mosque of Medina, to turn his face towards the south in Mecca, where he knew was a pagan town by virtue of Quran chapter Saba 34 verse 44. Muhammad could turn his face to the Karaba in Petra city, where he traveled with his uncle Abu Talib on his way to Syria and saw the magnificent temple of Utsa, since he was about 12 years old. Nabatines from the son of Ishmael dwelt in Jordan until today, and there is no report of them migrating to the wilderness of Saudi Arabia. In Matthew 7 15-17, Hebrew Jesus said, Beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? So, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. Unquote thus you will recognize them by their fruits, by the spoken pure Arabic words, 
you shall know the family tree of Sheba son of Yoktan in Arabia or Yemen. By the accent of Nabadi in Aramaic, you shall know the family tree of Nabajoth son of Ishmael in Jordan. By the accent of Arabic of Hijaz, you shall know the family tree of Sheba and Dedan children of Yokshin son of Kidder a concubine of Abraham. Not only the spoken accent of Arabic tell us their origin but the deeds of the Arabized Arabs revealed the kind of false prophet Muhammad of the Quraysh tribe, which Hebrew Jesus warned about it. The holy site of the Hebrews is Jerusalem in Israel but the false prophet changed it to Petra city in Jordan by Quran 2 145. According to Dane Gibson, author of the book called Quranic Geography, the ancient kibble of the mosques found around Petra, had its foundation and axis of the building aligned towards Petra, not even close to Medina even after the death of Muhammad until 200 year of Adra. By his discovery, Mecca town could be a replacement model of ancient Petra city in Jordan, which was damaged by two earthquakes in 363 AD and 551 AD. The city of Mecca served as a sanctuary for the early Muslims was then located in Petra of Jordan. By 680 AD, Abdallah ibn al-Zubayr rebelled against the Umayyad rulers in Damascus and he declared himself as the Caliph of Arabia. Umayyad army came to wage war against him in 683 AD and the army used catapult to bombard the Mecca walled city. The Karaba constructed of timber was destroyed by fire and the black stone burst asunder. The black stones of different sizes measuring between 1.5 feet long to 1.4 meters long have been reported to be used on the Karaba. In the 10th century, an observer described it as being one cubit slightly over 1.5 feet 0.46 meter long. By the early 17th century, it was recorded as measuring 1.5 yards 1.4 meter by 1.33 yards 1.22 meter. According to Muhammad Ali Pasha in the 18th century, reported it as being 2.5 feet 0.76 meter long by 1.5 feet 0.46 meter wide. It is theorized that after the black stone of the Karaba and Petra was burnt by fire, and burst into fragments in 683 AD. Another Karaba in Mecca built by Asad Abakar began to replace it. By 700 AD Petra once a thriving city was abandoned by the Nabateens. After 725 AD the Kibble of the mosques gradually switched from Petra of Jordan to Mecca of Saudi Arabia. The traders from Medina and Yemen met halfway for trading in the town called Mecca. The Himyarite kingdom in Yemen began to expand its territory northwards into Saudi Arabia. According to Dr. Rafat Amari author of the book Islam in the Light of History, a Himyarite pagan leader named Asad Abukurb founded the town of Mecca. He is also called Abukurb Asad, and he reigned in Yemen from 410 to 435 AD. The date on which the black stone first appeared in Mecca was at the time of Muhammad's grandfather, sometime between 495 and 520 AD. It is a historical fact that the original Karaba was an open-sided hut without any wall around it at the time of Muhammad. Islamic Tradition by Sahih Bukhari Volume 5, Book 58, Number 171 Narrated by Amr ben Dinar and Ubaidullah ben Abi Yazid, In the lifetime of the Prophet there was no wall around the Karaba and the people used to pray around the Karaba till Amr became the Caliph and he built the wall around it. Ubaidullah further said, its wall was low, so Ibn Azabair built it. The Sabian language and other languages used in some of the rival kingdoms in Yemen were like Arabic. But they were not Arabs, differing in distinctive ways, according to Christian Robin, director of ancient Semitic studies at France's National Center for Scientific Research in Paris. Though the Sabians and others in the region are referred as South Arabians in the geographical sense, Robin says, they cannot be considered, nor did they consider themselves to be, Arabs as this implies that they spoke Arabic, which they did not. Islamic scholars formulated a more detailed genealogy of the Arabs, in which those tribes originating from Yemen, and much of the western coastal plain of Arabia were said to descend from Ka'adan, in Hebrew Yoktan, while those further north were said to descend from Adnan. The people of Saba, and later Himyar, did not speak Arabic, and thus they could not be called Arabs, but known as Sabians and Himerites. 
the Himyarites did emigrate to central western Arabia, when the Murid Dam in Yemen burst, and caused massive flood around 150 AD. The Quraysh tribe of Muhammad came from the Sabians, and hence he was not a descendant of Adnan in northern Arabia. But Adnan, probably in Hebrew is Dedan, did not come from Ishmael but either from Yokshine son of Kidder a concubine of Abraham, or from Ramasan Kush, father of King Nimrod the mighty hunter, whose forefather was Ham. The Hebrew book of Jasher chapter 25 verse 8 says, But the children of Sheba and Dedan, children of Jokshan, with their children, did not dwell with their brethren in their cities, and they journeyed and encamped in the countries and wildernesses unto this day. Unquote the wildernesses could be the desert lands in the Arabian Peninsula. The Ishmaelites stayed in the region called Jordan today. They were known as Nabateans around the 1st century AD. Jasher chapter 25 verse 20 says, And they went and dwelt near the wilderness of Paran, and their dwelling was from Havila unto Sho, that is before Egypt, as thou come toward Assyria. Unquote Yahweh God did not create a world of many languages but only one language of the Hebrews. Genesis 11 1 Now the whole earth had one language in the same words. Genesis 11 6 And Yahweh said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Genesis 11 7 Come, let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. Genesis 11 8 So Yahweh dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Genesis 11 9 Therefore its name was called Babel, because there, Yahweh confused the language of all the earth. And from there Yahweh dispersed them over the face of all the earth. Unquote Based on the Hebrew book of Jasher, Abraham was about 48 years old when the confusion of tongues into many languages of the world began at Babel city. Eber the forefather of the Hebrews retained the same Hebrew tongue, whereas another son of Eber called Yoktan became the forefather of Arabs. Genesis 10:25 to Eber were born two sons, the name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Yoktan. Unquote the idiom of the earth was divided has been explained in Genesis 10.32 about the nations are divided in the earth after the flood, because of the curse on Babel. Genesis 10.32 These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Based on the Strong's Hebrew lexicon, Peleg means earthquake, and Yoktan means he will be made little, an Arabian patriarch. Eber outlived Abraham by 30 years. No doubt this gives the legal ground for the Hebrews, to be originally called after Eber. The division of Hebrews into many languages of the world began after the death of Peleg, a symbolic for earthquake of the nation of Eber which split into Hebrews, and Gentiles until today. This is the most logical explanation as to, why the world population has different languages and no longer of one language, since the time of Eber. The DNA of Arabs could differ from the Hebrews by the accent of the language which they speak. Quran itself makes it very clear that Muhammad of the Sabians' origin did not receive the scripture nor warner was sent to them before him, as told in Quran chapter Sabians 34 verse 44. This is crystal clear that Muhammad did not come from the bloodline of Abraham son of Eber forefather of the Hebrews. In view of the foregoing facts, None of the Hebrew prophets from the bloodline of Eber has anything in common with the Arabs from Yemen, where the origin of Quraysh tribe originated from there. Muslims should remove all Hebrew names from the Quran, since the Sabians come from Yokten in Yemen did not share the common father of Abraham. The pure Arabs came from the forefather of Yokten the patriarch of Arabian. Yokten son of Eber did not call himself after Eber, because Yahweh changed his DNA for disobedient in Babel, and became to speak a new language called Sabian today. The central western Arabians were Dedanite son of Yokshan son of Kidra, whereas the Sabians in Yemen came from Saba, in Hebrew Sheba, son of Yokten. Ishmaelites happily dwelt in the wilderness of Paran known as Jordan, until today. Quran Saba 34 verse 44 says, and we have given them forefathers of Muhammad no scriptures which they study, nor send we unto them, before thee, any warner.
Koran Yasin 36 verse 6 says, that thou may warn a folk, whose fathers were not warned, so they are heedless. Quran Had 11 verse 49 says, This is of the tidings of the unseen, which we inspire in thee Muhammad. Thou thyself knew it not, nor did thy folk know it before this. Unquote Pikthal Translation Let's pray to Yahweh God for his guidance, on knowing the truth about the origin of Hebrews, and of the Gentiles including Arabs, Chinese, English, Greek, and others. Dear Father Yahweh God, blessed be your holy name. I have come to know the truth that your name is Yahweh, which means self-existent and eternal. There is none like you who loves the Adamic race. While we were still sinners, you sent your only Son to come down from his throne with you in heaven. That he was incarnated into the Hebrew race of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. That you are the God of the Hebrews and of the Gentiles. Please remove the blindness from the eyes of the Muslims, and let them see that Muhammad came from Yokton or Ka'adin, who was not the people of the covenant of Abraham. Quran Saba 34 verse 44 says clearly that neither Warner nor scripture was sent to the forefathers of Muhammad before him. Please help them to see the truth in the Holy Bible, that is the true historical records. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. If you truly love Jesus Christ, then click like and share this blessing with others by passing it on. Shalom.